Hello team, I am so happy to walk you and guide you through our administrator system login access. And so we have just merged from being a basic Schoology user to our enterprise to where we actually house our own Schoology. So the purpose of this video is to kind of walk us through at least a part one of some of the things that we're able to do on a minute stride and what we're going to utilize. Um, please note that this is me with 24 hours of understanding. So there's a lot more that I'm going to be able to access and be able to understand. But this is to give you your first understanding. The first thing you will notice is that you have some tools bar, which you did not have previously. And tools is where your first information is pretty much housed. You have your advisor dashboard user analytics, user management, and school management. School management will probably be mostly managed by the one person who is over Schoology at this time. I'm the main technical person support. I'm going to click it real quick to let you know that school management is really for overall for all of those things, enabling parent access codes, um, which time zone. So you're not going to do a lot of work in here. Um, we're going to be doing more work in our other settings. So we're going to look right now at our very basic and that's user management. In order for us to be able to manage users, we go here. And this is where we first understand um, your edit users, users. So if students have forgotten passwords, if someone has parents as well, an email that they want to change access to, if they want to change the spelling of the names, this is where you come in and you do an edit. I'm not going to be able to change anything here because I don't want to change anyone's passcode information. But what you would do is simply um, type in their name. I'm going to use help in regard because we have a help desk and it's first name, last name, username. So you don't always have to have an email to log in, but you can use a username, which is unique. If I wanna add an email to here, you definitely can. And this is where we also go to reset passwords. So all you do here to reset a password is click here. So you do have the access if a student forgets or anyone forgets their password that you're able to reset it and to work within that. Um, in your second one, and this is where we do a lot of work here, is the roles and advanced. So here is our photos of our personnel. Um, this is where we can put their titles. Um, this is where we know their roles and we're able to edit their profile. For example, I need to make someone a system admin. I'm coming here and Emil is a teacher, but she knows that she is, I can change her title here, but I'm also making Emil one of our system admin. Now, system admin must be approved by administration. We will not have that many, but this is where we save those changes so your access is had. Um, definitely need to know if we have roles for parents, and these are our teacher, help desk, student, that's our roles, and that's where we keep it. Here, as well as we can edit their profiles, if we choose to interest contact information if we needed to do that. Um, we have supreme access to do that. Faculty information, um, that role here is where we can put their departments in. We're not quite at that point. Those are things that we're going to work on. And we also have their positions, which we will change because Ms. Maywish currently is the vice principal of secretary and teaching. Um, so we have our parent and our advisor's information and we can be able to understand their roles. Um, we're not really working with the inactive or the merge, but we're gonna be able to kind of delete um, students that are not users and everything else like that later. Um, here's where we create users. If someone is not part, there is no more logging in. We have to create their role. So I'm going to create a role here and I put their name here, Justin. Um, I'm going to spell his name wrong, so please excuse me. I am going to put him down for principal. And then his email address. Um, and then I can make a password, which is at this point in time, and he will change it by this time. So I'm saving it. Email conflicts, you're able to put don't allow 
Google Quits, I can create accounts just with the username only, which is better for our um, elementary, um, and be able to do that. So that's a way. Make sure that you always um, create the user save, send. Oh, sorry. Do not allow duplicates. And that was done. And so the email is actually sent to that person. So we were able to create eight users there. Roles is something that you're not going to touch too much, um, as well as permissions. Um, this is, once again, headed by the whole school. So this is one of the things that your system administrator will be doing. So this is a little bit of the technical of working with students and being able to understand that. We're now going to use its analytics. This is something I'm just showing you, but it just gives you an overview of who's using what. Our course material breakdowns, our submissions versus views, test quiz views. This is something that we're going to go into a real detailed training later on how we're able to really utilize the screen and be able to go through. Um, we can have export reports, um, system logins as well. It lets me know who's logged in where. So it's a wonderful opportunity to kind of check with your students to see what's going on, how they're doing. And once again, when you click the student, it gives you the individual information and details. I'm not going into that yet. We're going to go back to tools. This is where we're going to play around for a little bit. And we're going to go into advisor dashboard. At this point in time, this is blank, but this is a great way for us to look at our students and find some very important information through this. I'm looking at the summary. I clicked in a student now, no off, which is a um, just sample. And the first thing it shows me is all the courses that this child is in. And it shows me their groups once we start creating groups. And then it now shows on this side on Sunday all the work that they have. So this is one of those tools that we definitely need the due dates of the work that is being done here. So all of that is here. You're able to um, click on the work to actually get an idea of what it actually looks like. So you're able to see um, the view, the assignment, view Dropbox, um, the amount of points here, and all of those things. We're going to go back up. I want to play in here a little bit more. This is the calendar. So here is an overview calendar for April of what assignments were due, not assigned, due on which date. So this is very important for us when we're talking about our workloads and being able to see what students have and each days and how that looks. Right here, we have an assignment that's due on a Saturday, which should not happen. So this is when we go back and we start talking to our teachers to make sure that we are um, following the expectations that we're not overloading um, the classes and we're kind of looking and managing what happens here as well is where we now have an overview of all grades if I wanted to turn around and look at the students grades it tells me here it tells me their assignments what's been submitted what has not been submitted and their course grades so as admin you have an overall view to be able to do that we also have their attendance but remember that we're not managing their attendance but you can definitely look at their attendance here so this is just the summary understanding of what can happen the other piece um, that's really important for us is that um, once again you can go into and look at the student they have their information here um, we will look into what's portfolios and badges, but I'm trying to give you an overview of just the first primary things that can happen with what we can look at. These are our courses. This is your personal information for groups, so all of this stuff stays the same. Now, going into part two, if you have courses, and I'll teach you that as a teacher, we must be able to understand that we have new badges here, which is workload planning, Common Core Explorer and conferences and I'm going to do a video for our teachers that really really breaks information down for that at this point in time please go through and play with your administrative access to see what you can see and um, what needs to be worked on and honed the last piece I want you to know about is that we have apps that we can add to help it easier so we're going to have to do this with our PD 
and training our teachers. If I use Khan Academy, I'm now able to link all of that into Schoolology to make that easier for our kids to go to. Um, I'm able to put YouTube in the resource app, but there are some apps that will just come and be part of your regular activities. Common Core Lessons and Planning, Fun Brain. I can link Fun Brain. I'll link Quick Quiz it. Um, so what happens here is I can click this and it says install app. And so, I have to do that later. Um, you can just install it and it comes into your information. I'm going to put add to the organization. Um, and so what happens is that now we have apps that we're able to utilize when we're creating the assignments and different things like that. So that's something that we do have to go through and have our teachers go through and have that resource. This is just an overview of the admin access. Like I said, this is part one. We're really going to dive deep into our part two, but we have this. Thank you.